Okay, so continuing from last lesson, we're going to go ahead here and work through the rest of our polygon module system here and take a look at our create UVs tab. Okay, so let's just go ahead and I'm going to rip this off. Okay, planar projection. Your planar projection is basically a plane whenever you're projecting a UV map. Okay, so you just have to think of it as this is a plane and it's gonna let me go ahead and just try to rotate this 90 degrees here it's basically gonna project like that okay there's no depth to it there's no um, curve to to this sort of projection and you can either project in your X, you can pro, um, project in any one of the axes, whether it be X, Y, or Z. Okay, so this would be your Z, this would be your X, and if we go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees, this is going to be your Y direction. But you can see where it's only it's only going to project in one of these axes. Okay, but you can see where it's only going to project flat so let's go ahead and delete these select our mesh and we'll click on the option box here and we're going to just simply go ahead and project in the z-axis okay so let's go ahead and project and I will open up my UV editor here which is under the edit UVs okay UV texture editor you can see here where it simply projects in the z-axis and this is a completely flat UV projection um, this is more for for doing things that are flat. Um, it, it's not meant to to go ahead and actually use for let's say in this example UV mapping ahead. This would have to be something um, completely different in terms of the projection that we would need. But you can see where um, this will do at least a decent job for UV mapping things that are um, fairly flat. Okay, so let's go ahead and select our model here and let's take a look at our cylindrical mapping. Your cylindrical mapping is more of basically just a cylinder that's um, going to be, be projected minus the tops here. Let me go ahead and just delete the, the top and the bottom here. This is basically how it's going to um, go ahead and project your your UV. Okay, and you can see where this is the cylinder, and this might actually work for us. Okay, so let's just go ahead and delete this cylinder and bring in our cylindrical mapping template and you can see where we have these little red squares things on the sides and this allows us to drag the size of our UV mapping shell same with the yellow and green one here indicating the top and the bottom and if we go ahead and take a look at this projection you can see where this does a, a fairly decent job in terms of projecting a UV for our model but even this isn't necessarily going to be something that we would want um, to go ahead and unfold this it's going to take a fairly decent amount of time but you can see where that cylindrical mapping is going to be fairly good in terms of being able to create you know decent um, UV layouts for things okay so let's go ahead here and select our model and we will go ahead and bring in a polygon sphere here and we're going to use this in terms of our spherical mapping here this is basically how our spherical mapping projection will come out okay so if we go ahead and just select our geometry there and we're going to go ahead and run our spherical map you can see where you have sort of a sphere in terms of the outline and that's going to allow us to project okay so let's go ahead and just select our sphere there and delete that so you can see whenever I select the model what our spherical map actually looks like here inside of Maya it's similar to the cylindrical mapping but our spherical mapping actually does a better job because you can see where our eye shapes are, are more roundish same with our ears our nostrils and even our um, mouth and mouth sac here you can see where that actually does a little bit better job 
and I'm just using the uh, unfold relax tool there or the smooth tool, UV tool there to go ahead and unfold that and if we went and you know say scaled this up a little bit here we would be able to unfold this you know fairly decently and fairly easily but you can see where that th spherical mapping is actually going to do a better job for us okay um, creating UVs based on camera or your automatic mapping your automatic mapping isn't necessarily going to be um, yes it is good but it's not necessarily going to be uh, a planar projection it's more of taking a planar projection from many different axes or many different sides of the model so if we take a look at this you can set the amount of planes that you want for your projection so up to 12 it's going to give us a lot of pieces or a little, um, little bit less distortion so if we have our model selected here and just hit apply and we'll take a look in the UV editor here you can see where that automatic mapping projection is sort of weird it's it will work for for things okay but having to actually go ahead and rebuild this entire UV shell would take a lot of time um, so you definitely wouldn't use this on something like a head or um, certain parts of a character this would be something for a completely different okay and as you can see here where it's like yeah we'll just go ahead and minimize this because that's really scary so we'll go ahead and close that creating UVs based on your camera is basically how you're looking at your model okay so if we go ahead and run that you can see where the projection is basically based on your camera f camera's view and that's not bad but that's not something that we would actually want so it works um, sort of like the the planar projection inside of Maya and th this would sort of take us a little bit time to also go ahead and unfold okay um, the rest of these are, are more for uh, a little bit more advanced and I'm not going to really go into the, um, these with you guys but as long as you understand like the planar projection your cylindrical mapping and the rest of these you shouldn't necessarily have a problem actually going ahead and, and UV mapping anything that you want okay so let's go ahead and take a look at the other side here in our edit UVs tab it should be noted that all of these tools are also here on the left side under the polygon menu in your UV editor okay so let's just go ahead and close this and just basically bring this back here I'm not going to go ahead and go through these because these are some of the other ones that were in here your normalize your UVs is basically um, going to stretch your UV shell to, to normalize it to fit with inside your 0 to 1 space here as you can see okay your flip is, is basically going to allow you to go ahead and flip your normals so if your normals are reversed whenever you're projecting a UV map it will allow you to go ahead and reverse those and I just want to show you that under the image tab here shade UVs your model should be blue it shouldn't be red if it's red or if it's um, purplish pinkish like this this means that you have overlapping UVs okay so let me just go ahead and re UV map our model here with our spherical projection you can see where you can see right away where we have a blue model but there's actually still a little bit of red in here okay so these are um, overlapping UV shells and this isn't something that you would want whenever you go to texture your model okay so you want to try to keep your your UV shells completely blue and turning on that shade UV will actually help you to give you the correct normals whenever you're gonna go ahead and actually export the UV map out and then go ahead and texture your model rotate is basically going to allow you to rotate the UVs so you can simply just use the shortcuts as well which are uh, W, E, and R and you can see where you can move it, rotate it, and scale it whatever way that you want okay 
Um, that's pretty much it. Your warp image is basically going to be like your warp tool inside of Photoshop. Um, you can also map your UV border, which is basically the border of your map. Um, same with straighten, it's going to straighten that border. Relax is basically just go ahead and select our UV shell here, which is basically that. Um, layout is going to sort of lay out all of your UVs inside of the space here, all the single faces, which probably isn't something that you would want to actually go ahead and do um, unless you're adding something like a fur system to your model or a hair system to your model. Cutting your UV edges is, is basically where you want your UV shells to be seamed um, just so that you can get a, a clear projection and a clear layout for your model. And I think that's probably the rest here. Um, that, we'd that I wanted to actually show you. Your UV snapshot is just basically going to allow you to export your UVs um, in an image that you can then take into Photoshop and then start texturing or lay your textures over. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these tools. Okay, so if we just grab vertices here, or UVs, and we go ahead and close this, just take a look at this. You can see where the, the warp is basically going to allow you to go ahead and warp certain portions of your models. It also works on um, not the entire shell of the model. You can simply just do certain UVs and whatnot. You can also change the resolution here just by double clicking on it. And you can see where, if I just update this, you can see where it's going to change the, the amount that we're going to be able to go ahead and do there. Okay. And let's go ahead and close that. Let's take a look at what this will do. It basically just, no matter where you grab the UV, it's going to grab the entire shell, as you can see there. Relax and unfold, you can grab the entire shell and it's going to allow you to go ahead and basically relax your model. Let's take a look at this other one here, which is sort of like the paintbrush inside of Photoshop where it allows you to like liquefy your model and your UVs to go ahead and quickly get these actually unfolded and cleaned up. So you can also take B and make your brush bigger and still edit your UVs fairly quickly. I'm not too worried about actually distorting this mesh because I'm not going to save the scene here. Let's take a look at this other one. and. You can see where this is sort of going to be like, I can't even explain to you really what this is going to do, but it's mainly for um, the shortest edge path here. Okay, so you want to just go ahead and select an, an edge here, and go ahead and select this. Okay, and then you would come up here and cut your UVs. Okay. Um, these are more for basically rotating UVs, so let's go ahead and like select a couple UVs here. And you can see where it's going to rotate either in one direction or in the other direction. Um, same thing with this one. You can see where it's really going to sort of distort your mesh. These are your alignments, so you can either align it left, right, down, and up where it takes all those UVs and basically pushes it to, you know, one direction. Um, but mainly, you just want to understand and be able to manipulate them manually before you actually go ahead and start using some of these tools. Because um, some of these tools are, are fairly complex, and I don't want to go ahead and sort of confuse you, you guys and everybody. Just learn how to um, go ahead and manipulate these manually, and once you learn how to manipulate these manually, and understand how to, to actually go ahead and lay out your UVs, you shouldn't necessarily have any issues. Um, so in the next lesson, we'll go ahead and come back, and we will um, go ahead and continue working through our menu set. So yeah, come on back.